Hey guys, this is Brian uh, with Hop Sauce now, and I'm excited to be on here. Uh, I know I was supposed to be on here last week, and we had some technical difficulties, which made it harder for me to do the show on this channel, but we got everything figured out, so we'll be on here from now on. Uh, so today is uh, really cool because I'm we're heading across the Atlantic to talk about Lindemann's Lambic Beers, and my favorite by them is their Creek, which is their Cherry. But before we go into the beers, let's talk about the brewery itself. So uh, Lindemann's is actually the name of the family that owns the company, and they've owned the company ever since it started. So the f originally it was actually an agricultural farm, and the farm, at least in their history books, where they started brewing beer, started 1822. So the, the farm was located in Velsenbeek, I hope I'm saying that right. Belgium, Velsenbeek, Belgium. And like I said, and it was started by Jos Franz Linzemann and his wife, Fra uh, Francois, or, or I hope that looks like Francine. Francoisie jo Joseline van der Miesen. And so the two of them owned a farm. And during the day when they did all their agricultural stuff, uh, Obviously, they just ran farm operations, but at night, uh, Jus Franz would do would start brewing, and in so in uh, Pathajalin region of Belgium, which is like southwest of Brussels, and even in Brussels, uh, they brewed Lambix, which is a which is a sour, which is a style of sour, um, which is a style of sour beer, and uh, so since the beginning. The family has owned the company. It has never not been owned or run or managed by someone other than a, like a Lindemann. And I, I think that's awesome. So basically like their goal is to keep that traditional style of Lambic strong. It's literally the only type of beer they make. Uh, they make a, a bunch of different flavors. Uh, so I picked three that I've never had. Uh, I want to give it a fair shake because, I, like I said, I like their Creek, which is cherry. Uh, so today we have the Frambois, which is uh, raspberry. We have the Cassis, which is the black currant. And uh, I tried one that, you know, it, it, it piqued my interest. I've never seen one before, uh, an apple lambic. So if you go on their website, which I put a link in the description below, you can see all their styles of beer that they've made. They also have, uh, so they have these three, the Creek, they have a peach one. And a strawberry one. I, so those, the peach and the strawberry are the only other two I've never had. But uh, I'll definitely try them in the future. They have a couple like special ones. It's like the Ode to uh, something Cuvée. Cuvée Rene. And uh, those look really good. And they make gin. On the website, if you look, it also says gin. They make a red gin and a clear gin. So definitely go check those out too. It also has a line of their family history. It talks like the, uh, usually I go into like big events that happen and stuff like that, but their history is mainly on the family and the business, not as much like events and stuff like that where, um, and they do do a lot of stuff for the communities and stuff like that in Belgium. Um, they hired 50 something like uh, non Lindemann employees that they consider family as well, which is very nice. They're a very family oriented business. They're very big into the whole, like, you know what, like, one for all kind of thing, which is nice. Um, so this episode is going to face more on the beers. And what I'm going to do today, which I usually don't do, is I'm actually going to pour all three at once because I want to show you guys that the, uh, the different type of fruit gives you a different kind of color variation in the beers. So, so I'll talk a little bit about the beers themselves because there's a, uh, they actually give like descriptions and food pairings, which I think are awesome. So I got to get through this wrap. I forgot they have corks. Uh, yeah, just so just for a heads up, uh, Lindemann's products have a cap and a cork. So definitely be aware of that. So the first one is the uh, the Frambois, which is uh, the Creek and the Frambois are the more popular ones. Uh, so this one came in. So the ABVs are super low. So I would recommend these to anyone, anyone that likes something a little bit fruity, 
Uh, you don't necessarily have to be a huge beer drinker to like uh, to like these. The um, the the Frambois comes in at like two point five percent, and then the other two come in at like three point five. So they're very they're very uh, very light beers. Let's see if I can do this without breaking the the corks on camera. The last time I did this, I had them open it. Come on now. Now this is gonna be 10 minutes of me trying to take corks out. So Beer Advocate actually gave this a decent score. Uh, all three of them got in the 80s and the high threes. Uh, so, like I said, the Frambois and the, and the Creek are the most popular ones. Uh, so, the Frambois at a, if I can get this thing out of here, came in at a 3.92 with a pro score of 88. They talk, a lot of what the website shows is like, they talk about the appearance of the beer and stuff like that. Come on, Okay. The corks aren't that big either. This just shows that I'm weak as hell and that you guys are actually watching me try to open this. So they added raspberry juice into this, natural raspberry juice flavor, to give it a beautiful dark pink color, which is what I'm trying to show you guys. Come on now. Give me that cork. And basically, uh, so the, the Frambois is served as an aperitif, and for those of you that don't know what an aperitif is, it's basically a drink that served before the meal in order to uh, basically drive your appetite for the meal ahead. Whereas a deeper teeth is for after the meal to settle your stomach. Usually it's going to be a little bit like creamier, richer, because now you're settled. Now you're settling from that heavy meal you just had, whether it was something heavy like with a heavy sauce or a heavy bodied meal like steak, like red meat. Uh, so basically, if I can get this freaking cork off, I almost got it. I would use the lighter method, but I feel like I wind up breaking the glass. I really forgot these things had corks. As it goes everywhere. That's one. Good thing I put paper towels down. So yeah, so this was so this beer was given as an appetizer before the meal in order to get your stomach ready for the meal ahead. Whereas the other two are meant more for like are a little bit different as for what they were made for originally. And so moving on to the, the black current, because we're just gonna try all three of these at once. They smell really good. So the black currant obviously has cassis in it, which is almost like a grape, um, just a smaller type of grape. And a lot of people are like, oh, is this a beer? Is it a wine? Like what, like what kind of drink is it? Uh, it is a beer. <laughs> it looks like a wine. It gives a dark purplish hue, which gives it the look of wine, but it's not actually wine. I wish I had a lower table. Uh, 
This one's coming out 10 times easier. So the big part of the show today is to look at the difference, the difference in color. There we go. Awesome. That one was a lot cleaner. So to go back to the framboise, so I did say that they had food pairings and I am apologizing because you're basically watching me for like five minutes try to open these things. Um, the food pairing for the framboise, they said on the website is perfect for an endive salad. I didn't know what that was, but the endive is almost like lettuce, but it's like canoe shaped leaves. So what people will do is an endive salad, they'll just take the leaves, they'll make it into a nice arrangement and they'll put, um, they'll put like chopped pears, walnuts, like crumbled gorgonzola, and they'll drizzle it with like oil and vinegar. And the framboise will really bring out the flavor in the fruit that's in it will, you know, bring out the, will really bring out the flavor in the fruit and the consistency throughout the salad. And obviously the dressing, because you're not going to have, it's oil and vinegar. It's not heavy salad dressing. Now the black currant is more of a dessert beverage. So this one I'd probably say is probably more of your deeper teeth, if I had to guess. And because they pair it with basically um, like cheesecake or any type of fruit or chocolate dessert, but this one's going to be a pain in the ass too. I can already tell. But the black currant one, I've had a black currant sour before, but never a lambic style. It was strictly just a black currant sour. Um, so that one is comes in at 3.5% with a 3.88, so slightly lower than the Frambois, and the Pro Score uh, goes to an 87. So like not much different. They all kind of round out at the same amount. And they're like I said, their their BA scores are in the 80s or, or in the high threes, and their Pro Scores are in the 80s. The Apple, not super surprised it was lower. I'm assuming it's not as popular. Um. It also 3.5% comes in at 3. Point, what it come 3.69 with an 84. So it is lower, but I'm kind of excited because the website has like a, actually like a nice little history thing about it. So basically it was called Pume is what it's originally called. It's basically just that term for the apple sour and the, the Celts, back in the day used to make this during harvest season and it was a very prestigious drink. If I can get it out, I have a feeling this one's going to explode too. Come on. Cassis one came out so nice. And then now I got a fighter, a fighter cork on the apple. So the apple one, just to give a little bit on that more. So they try to base it more sweetness like a cider than a beer, but it's still the same style. And it pairs well with regular salads and foie gras, foie gras on toast. For those of you who don't know what foie gras is, it's a specialty food made out of like the liver of like duck or goose. And it's been a very 
uh, controversial like uh, product because it's one of those like uh, they say they force fed the ducks or the geese to give it that. There we go. Come on now. Woo! They basically force fed the ducks and the goose to like make it taste the way it does. So it was a very big controversy thing. And uh, it's actually illegal to have in California. I didn't know that, so I looked it up. But now that I'm wet and uh, all the bottles are open, now I can show you what I'm talking about. So let me lean the camera down. So basically, the big topic today, and like I said, these are low ABV drinks, so So the red, so it's supposed to be like a dark pinkish red with a pink, with a bright pink, with a bright pink foam. Uh, obviously you can see from the foam. This one's supposed to be purple with a pinkish, with a, like a, with like a dark pink or slightly pink head as well. This should want, this one should be relatively darker than the Frambois. And the apple one's probably going to look the most normal. Out of all of them, there's really no color change to it as much as I would love it to be like if it was because they show regular and they show like different types of apples. If this thing came out like a green color, that would have been insane. But you're going to see right off the bat, it's going to look kind of almost like, like I said, almost like a cider. So it's going to have a white, the foam head is going to be white. And it's gonna just look like a cider. It's gonna have that gold, that like golden, delicious color to it. But there it is. Let's see if I can get the rest of this frambois out without making it more foamy than it is. Unfortunately, I kind of shook up the frambois, so it looks almost like a milkshake now. They all smell really good. So we'll start with this one with the Frambois. This, so like I said, this one's the most popular, so we'll see how it tastes. Oh, that's delicious. It literally tastes like a juice. So aperitifs, just to go back to what I said, um, aperitifs are actually meant to be non-alcoholic. They're not supposed to like get you buzz, get you anything like that. It's literally just supposed to open up your system, basically prep it for the meal. Alcoholic beverages won't normally do that because there's the, obviously the feeling of it, like the alcohol, what the alcohol does to the body. But this literally tastes like a juice. It's really good, very sweet, still tart. But good, very, very bearable. I could definitely see myself ordering this with a meal or having a nice salad. Fruit, I would think more of like a fruit salad or something like an apple walnut salad. Um, I've never had this endive salad that they're showing, but I looked at pictures of it and I can totally see how this would pair with it. Now, the cassis, now you now see if it shows. I don't know, maybe the light's not that great. Maybe I poured it really bad. I can tell that this one's brighter than this one just from the level, but this one's supposed to be more of a dark purple color where this is supposed to be like a bright red. And I bet if we had better lighting in here, more white light, you could tell the difference a little bit better. But this one is um, basically more of a dessert drink, a dessert beer. Uh, there are a lot of dessert beers. Some people actually think stouts are dessert beers because a lot of them have different like flavors. Like they'll have a lot of chocolate stuff to it. But let's see how this tastes. Definitely more tart. Definitely more tart than the last one. I love the flavor, though. Not as juicy. So it is fruity. Don't get me wrong. It is sweet. But it's not... It's not... Ju like, this, like, almost like juice flavor. This, I can definitely tell this is a beer. Definitely like the flavor. This is something I would... I don't know. I feel like I would do it the same as the Frambois. I'd order it in the beginning of the meal. I probably wouldn't order this with my dessert. I mean, the cheesecake, if it's normal cheesecake, 
if it's raspberry cheesecake or cherry cheesecake, I'd probably go with something that matches the flavor more. But I can totally see how this is a how this would be played off as a dessert here. Now, the one I've been really interested in is this apple one. Um, usually, if you're going to go for a beer or anything with apple in it, you're going to go for a cider because it's basically all apples. That's why you buy it. But the way the way they advertise this, so I just want to read the bottle. Apple Pume Lambic Beer, crisp, aromatic, apple flavor and character, wild yeast fermentation, exceptional uh, complexity. So these are the new bottles, by the way, that Lindemann makes. This is their newer label. I've had their older labels before, the more like, uh, I don't want to call them cartoony, but they were definitely more, you know, animated, kind of, for lack of a better term. But these are cool. I like these. And uh, their beers are really, their lambics are really good if you're a sour beer drinker like me. So here's, so here's to this one. Oh, it smells really good. It's, it literally smells like apple juice, but. Wow, that's different. I like that. That's so cool. Okay. So definitely not a cider, definitely not a cider. It doesn't, it's, if I were to compare it to a cider, it'd have to be a sweeter cider because some ciders can be super dry. This is sweeter, a little bit more sour, but definitely full of flavor. It definitely, and I know on, and on their website, they say it's actually a whole different combination of apples. And I can tell because it doesn't taste straight like, you know, your normal apple or your great, like your regular, like red apple, your gray Smith apple, or like a yellow delicious, something like that, or a Macintosh apple, like, you know, or the computer apple, if you really, you know, but this is delicious, but this is actually really good. I like this a lot. If I had someone with me, I would have done the whole line. Or if the store had all of them, because I think the only one they didn't have was the Creek. But they had the peach and the strawberry. But I chose these three because uh, more sour drinkers are going to drink a, um, a Frambois than they're going to drink a uh, strawberry sour. So that's why I chose that. But overall, like, I don't know. As a sour drinker, like, I would rate these a lot higher. But at the same time, I kind of understand. Uh, they are super fruity. They are kind of, you know, a whole different breed of beer. You know, a lot of beer drinkers are going to want a, um, you know, are going to want something more like an IPA or a light beer, like a lager or a, uh, like a Pilsner, something like a Miller Lite. But in general, um, I, I believe they deserve a better score or like, you know, at least like 90s across the board for pro. Um, for BA scores, I mean, anything over a four, I don't know. Like, I don't like I'd give it over a four because I like them so much. And I like the concept. I like the family, the family concept, you know, a lot of places. And they try to be like that. The beer community in general, I've come to know throughout a lot of my research, especially with the breweries I've done. Um, they definitely are very more family oriented businesses. You know, they rely on the people that have been there for them, their family, their supporters. And they saw and a lot of them see their clientele and their staffing as family as well because of the support that they bring. And I and I and I can get behind that 100 percent. Um, right now, the brewery uh, isn't taking visitors. I looked at their news and reports, and obviously with COVID, um, they're not taking visitors. Uh, they usually close for holidays, like major holidays. But uh, if you go on their website, you can see pictures. You can see their beers, all their products like that. I left the link in the description. Please check them out. Go to your. You can find them at big at like beer big liquor stores um, on the East Coast. I know for a fact, uh, Total Wine sells them. I know that. I've seen them. Um, they are really good prices. So these are the smaller bottles. They do come in the 750s, but these are the half bottles. Uh, I think I paid $7.99 for the Apple and the Cassis, and then I paid $8.99 for the Frambois. So they range anywhere from $6.99 to $8.99. The bigger bottles are probably going to be a couple of dollars more each, but they're really good. They're totally worth it. Uh, I literally, these are some of the few beers I would probably buy like repetitively because of how good they are.
and you don't have to worry about getting too drunk. And if you don't like the taste of beer or you are starting to get into beers or starting to get into sour beers specifically, these are definitely great like stepping stones because they're not super tart. Like I've had sours that are way too tart and they, and all you taste is that mouth puckering taste. I do not get that with these beers. All three of these consistently have a great mouth feel to them. And no matter what, their flavor is consistent as well. People that drink a lot of beer know what that bottom of the can or bottom of the bottom beer tastes like. I can say with Lindemann's products, since I've had them in the past multiple times, um, like I said, I've had the Creek two or three times. Um, there is no bottom of the bottle flavor. You, you get a consistent flavor throughout the entire, the entire bottle. And these are definitely fun, like party drinks. You know, if you're throwing a big gathering and you want something a little bit different, um, if you have a guy that probably is going to drink his hop headed triple IPA, whatever, you know, try to get him to try this. I think people, I think anyone would like these. But that's all for today. Uh, like I said, their history was a lot of based on the family themselves, not you know, um, events and stuff that they've done. So to, to go in depth on the family to me, wouldn't make sense. It is a great read. I did spend like a couple hours reading about it. So I would definitely recommend checking it out, but I wanted to focus more consi like consistently on the color variations of the beers and the strawberry one should be a brighter red than this. The peach one probably going to look like this as well. Peach sours in general tend to not have any color, any coloring to it. Blueberry sours will try to get a bluish hue in it, but it's most likely going to come out like anything, like a lighter version of this. But in general, what's up, Eric? Uh, in general, Lindemans gets two thumbs up, five stars from me. I love their products. I'll promote them any day of the week. And I'm definitely going to enjoy all three of these after the show because I don't have to worry about getting drunk off them and I can still enjoy the rest of my day. So until next time, until next week. So, oh yeah. So for hop sauce, uh, Sunday is saucy Sunday with Corey. Definitely go check out his, his, uh, his podcast with, uh, I know the first episode, I don't know about the second one. I haven't watched it yet. Has Aaron and Eric and all them in it. Ed's in it a lot. Um, he goes over different hot sauces and like what to use with cooking and stuff like that. We're going to have a couple more shows on the channel. Um, so we're really excited to do this. This is what's going to be consistent from now on. Um, this channel is no gaming. So if you want gaming, you can go to bike. We will still be doing stuff on bike, just specifically gaming. No more beverage corner. Uh, all the beverage corners are going to be put on this channel. Uh, all the future beverage corners are going to be put on this channel. Uh, any hot sauce challenges we do, any food-related topics or uh, bartending-related topics, any stuff like that will all be on hot sauce from now on. These are the consistent shows um, for now. In the future, we'll see what we, what we got going on, depending on how the public likes the videos. As we get close in the future, we're going to try to make this more of a production than a live stream. Um, I don't believe that we're doing it. Personally, for myself, I don't believe I'm doing my own show justice by doing it this way. Um, so in the future, we're going to bring you a little bit more, you know, pizzazz, as, as they call it. And we're definitely going to – we got a lot We got a lot of fun stuff coming for you guys. And we really hope that you enjoy it as much as we do making it. So until next time, I'm Brian. And it will be Thursdays for the, the time being. My schedule changed at work. So now Thursday is the day for Brian's Beverage Corner. Um, I will be posting it. Eric wants to add all the pizzazz we can because he's Eric and he's a genius. But until next time, I'm Brian with, Linde with Lindemann's Products, not sponsored. This is for fun. I love these guys. Please drink responsibly. I am going to have these one at a time and spread them out. So don't think I'm just going to chug the three of these and get wasted. So please drink responsibly, guys. Remember, like, even though everyone's staying home, don't.
Don't overconsume alcohol. It's not good for you. Have a great day, guys. Thank you for coming.